and welcome to this week's episode on how to be a great GM. I'm Guy and I'm going to be showing you how to draw this map of the city Waverley using Inkcarnate.com's amazing map generating software. Now when designing a city I always start with the geography because fantasy cities like most medieval cities were basically dictated by the geography. So in this case I'm going to draw on a very simple river. Maybe we'll turn that into a lake down here at the bottom, give us something to work with. And uh, the power of Incarnate is that you can basically change things as you go along, which is something that I really, 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 really appreciate about the program. Now, you can change things and change colors and things. So now if we draw a road, people will take the, the path, I beg your pardon, of the least resistance. And that means we'll go around or through the smallest part of the river. I'm now going to add in a little bit of uh, terrain here, some cliffs, just to make it more interesting. And again, it's about de de deciding, determining the shape of the geography so that your city will have a much more organic feel to it. Now, this, of course, is an isometric view. It's not a top-down view, and I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. So now our road starts to make more sense. And if we come in from the south, we'll take the uh, pathway through the hills. Again, we're going to go north. We'll take the pathway there. We could come down to the river, uh, the lake's edge. And we can have another path coming down that pass between the two cliff faces. Now, where we start to get joins, this always happens. An inn suddenly pops up. And where there's an inn, then there's suddenly the house for the innkeeper. And then you need the stable kids, need a home, and then you need another home, and another house starts to pop up. And then you need a blacksmith, then you need a trader, then you need, well, another little inn opens up. And slowly but surely, what starts to happen is a hamlet starts to form. Now, this is a simple little hamlet, but it needs food. So and markets of course so we're going to put in some markets quickly just those will proliferate of course proliferate more little cottages because now there's a market the market needs to sell something so we can now add in a farm up here and what i like about this program about incarnate for example is the way that it will now inspire me to tell better stories to my players i can now describe the golden fields of wheat that are in the northern sector of this town uh, because I can now actually see them. And that, for me, I appreciate a lot more than, than, than I thought I would. Now, every little town needs a wall to protect it. As it grows bigger, bandits will start to prey upon the local residents. The town's wall is going to follow the lay of the land, which, again, is why it's important to uh, work with a piece of geography first. The benefit, of course, of using Incarnate is that we can move the land around as we need to. I'm just going to extend these roads out this way and that way so we start to get the sense of the city building up. And um, we can start to add in more buildings. Now, we need a temple. Every major city or town as it grows develops temples. Temples need priests. Priests need homes. And so our village now turns into what could arguably be a town. Now, um, again, just using uh, the various pre-made houses that come with Incarnate makes it so much easier to create variety. And look at what this variety is saying, is that there's some houses that have got blue roofs, some that have got clay roofs, some of them that have got thatched roofs. Again, it's all just helping inspire you to tell a better story. Now, of course, we're going to need uh, some jetties. Oh, and out here we discover that the lake has got some good fishing. So we're going to put in some more keys and docks down there. And again, all this is doing is inspiring stories about fishermen, what's in the lake, all that kind of stuff. All right. So now back to creating our environment. We can put in some more trees out here, bring in that a little bit and... Um, this little village down here, now that there's a farm, is under attack from bandits. They're not protected by the big stone wall, so they're going to have a wooden wall. And again, you can now describe this isolated little hamlet that has a wooden wall around it. Now, why does it have a wooden wall around it as opposed to the stone wall? Why did the king not build a wall around this section or the lord or whomever? 
Well, who knows? Maybe it's because they're outcasts. Maybe it's because they're elves. Maybe it's because they're something else. Whatever it is, there's a story there. And that's important for you to know as the GM the story. Of course, once it's got walls, population will expand and increase and the roads will move to join in. People won't take roads that are stupid, so they're going to start making them straight again, um, trying to find the path of least resistance, quite literally in this case. Now, yeah, let's just fix that uh, there so that the wall touches and you can't just go around. Okay, so this hamlet now starts to... Uh, uh, become useful. This town is now starting to make money, so they build a castle. You always have to have a castle ruling over it. And of course, the castle then necessitates that uh, we try and avoid being uh, taken over by bandits and things. So I'm going to need to extend that wall around uh, the whole uh, castle area, if you like. We need bridges, of course. Bridges are always useful to cross rivers. That makes life a lot easier. And, of course, it adds another road because one bridge is not going to be enough for the traffic that's simply flowing through this town now. And um, what I like about building maps from scratch uh, while I put the waterfall in place, because one's always got to install a scenic waterfall that helps attract tourists, don't you know? But um, what I like about building maps from the ground up quite quite literally is that it allows you to anticipate uh, where things are going to go point number one but point number two it allows your NPCs to have a historical memory which you don't have to invent you just have to remember how you built your town and that's not too difficult if you're telling yourself the story of this town Oh, well, I remember when we didn't have all these walls and things. It was something horrid. The orcs would come down and plunder us. So, uh, well, when they built the wall, it was fantastic. Of course, it cut off a bit of the view. But, um, well, it helped keep everybody safe, and that's the important thing. And, um, you know, so it gives you a history that your NPCs can can add in. It also allows you, as the GM, to create little stories as you're going along. Like, are there things in those cliffs that perhaps were sealed away when they were building the walls? Or maybe uh, were trapped in there that now start to come out? More temples can get added as the city grows. We now need more temples and things. It's um, And obviously the houses grow even more and fill up what little space remains. The thing that I like about Incarnate, for example, as opposed to the other city builder, which I featured on my top five useful programs for GMs, is that unlike that city builder, which gives us a top-down view and just randomly generates massive cities, you don't really have too much control over placement and that sort of thing yet. I believe that they are working on extensions and things. What I like about Incarnate is that it gives me a picture from which to work rather than a map. Now, you might be saying, oh, but I can't see if this road leads exactly there or if that road leads here or wherever. Ask yourself, if you're having a chase sequence through a, a city like this, for example, do you need to know the exact distance between each of the roads, the exact length of the one road before it joins up with the other? Some of you might argue yes, so you can work out if the chase sequence is successful or not. For me, is the narrative valuable enough that the chase sequence is successful? If the answer is yes, then it really doesn't matter how long those roads are. If they take a shortcut between the temple and the waterfall, well, who am I to stop them or who am I to say, no, hang on a moment, that's 120 feet versus the 130 feet the thief has got to run. I don't worry about that sort of stuff. So this kind of map for me, by giving me a visual cue and giving the players a visual cue too, is far more valuable than any kind of top-down map would ever be just in terms of helping me describe the scene better, describe the nature of the space better. Now... And again, as you can see here, I'm busy coloring in the different areas, different colors, dependent on whether they're a little hamlet or maybe it's still a mud earth or a stone. And just giving a bit of color now to the grass so it's not all this sort of beigey brown type of thing. Um, and again, because it's software, you can undo or redo whatever it is that you have done. So 
I'm going to put the roads back in again because I may or may not have coloured over those. Uh, so we'll just drive the roads through, giving us a little bit more control as well. Um, and those roads would change over time too, so I don't have an issue with that. Now, the wonderful thing about Incarnate is that you can work on the map, you can save it uh, on the program, uh, on the on the website, uh, come back to it, rework it, work it later. You can add in, and I don't do it in this in this um, video, but you can add in a grid. You can whether it's hexagonal or standard grid, whatever you want it to be, you can throw that in. Uh, so it's really, really, really powerful uh, from that perspective. Now I want to add in a, a, a cemetery. Cities have got to have cemeteries. You've got to put your dead somewhere. Uh, so we're going to put them out here. We're going to have the Great Eastern Road is going to be the cemetery road and we're going to color that in so it's all bleak and gray the cemetery lies out that way some dead trees will finish it off quite nicely i think so this is uh sped up obviously it's running at 500 percent speed but this map took me no more than say an hour and a half to make um and as you're going to see now you can label the thing as much as you like you can change the font color there's five different fonts you can choose from they're all really cool sort of medieval kind of fonts they are in process of developing dungeon mapping uh, imagery as well so you can do interior structures as well as the exterior structures and i think it brings a wonderful uniformity to your space to your world i think it brings a wonderful a sense of color and completion and gives you this ability to see a space and then to describe it to players and if they get given this map there's enough on it that'll keep them busy like for example now i'm adding in all the taverns and things um, again it's an exercise that takes just a few minutes and yet results in a fantastic fantastic looking map if i were to do this by hand well you'd be watching another four part video that takes five or six hours to work through so there are merits to hand drawing, absolutely, without a doubt. But I think this program is a, it's an absolute find. It even comes with a compass. So I can drop in a compass and then label north, east, south, west, however I want to do it, however I want to make it look. And uh, I think that's that's something that's that's truly valuable. So I hope you enjoyed this very whirlwind tour of Incarnate. If you did, hit the like button. If you want to see more, hit the subscribe button. And uh, until next time, I wish you and yours the very happiest of gaming.